Wolfenstein The New Colossus is going to be released on the Switch soon, and the Twitter account recently posted another Trust in Brother video. I think this has finally made me willing to do a video on the franchise. If you've watched any of my recent videos, you probably know where I'm going with this, but I'm tired of Wolfenstein getting a free pass because it hides behind the obvious moral truth that Nazis are bad and that genocide is wrong. The video in question comes from a fictional television program in the alternate universe of Nazi America. It posits that Nazis hated rock and roll and loved polka, and saw both at the extreme opposite ends of the acceptable social behavioral spectrum. It's true that the Nazis thought jazz and other styles of music were terrible, but honestly the video's premise is just kind of funny because the games themselves have a bunch of Nazi rock records in them for you to collect. In any event, the video made me curious about the other Trust in Brother clips. I found one wherein the older brother scolds his younger brother for eating chocolate and displaying a lack of self-control, which honestly didn't sound so evil. Sugar is terrible for you, and being able to defer gratification is a great thing for young children. But of course, if you dress the guy saying this up in some Hitler youth attire and give him a militant demeanor, it all tastes fascistly delicious. But is anyone really going to tell me that advising your younger brother to be healthy and to be courageous and honorable to your society is evil? Perhaps the wording was a little overzealously patriotic, but there's nothing morally reprehensible about the older brother's message. Machine Games could have done a segment on racial genocide or even eugenics, which by the way, wasn't a Nazi invention. In fact, it was widely practiced around the world via forced sterilizations in places like the United States and Sweden, the home of Machine Games. But I digress. The point here is that they could have focused on any number of other things that were bad about the Nazis. But instead, they focused on the one thing the Nazis might have done right, public health policies. Hitler launched the first anti-smoking campaign, and the Third Reich was extremely concerned about the physical and emotional well-being of its citizens. Now to be clear, I don't support Nazis or fascists. My grandfather fought in World War II against both, and I'm proud of him for it. I shouldn't have to say this, but there are many Jews I admire and respect, like Primo Levi and Viktor Frankl. What happened to them was terrible, but that doesn't make absolutely everything the Nazis did bad. If that's the case, then we should probably end our space program considering how it's largely based on the work of Nazi scientists whom our government snatched up after the war during Operation Paperclip. This brings up another problem I've always had with the modern Wolfenstein games. They rightly make out Nazis to be at the wrong end of the moral compass, but they don't stop there. In order to belittle one of the attributes that Germans can actually be proud of, i.e. their ability to solve problems through engineering, the developers created a cult of Jewish engineers, the Das Schild, from whom the Nazis apparently stole all their technology. Look, I get it, Nazis are bad. The problem is that Germans were, and still are, simply good at engineering. Just as Ashkenazi Jews produce a lot of high IQ intellectuals and scientists, so do the Germans. But intelligence doesn't always give birth to morally superior ideologies, and there was really no need to explain away the Nazis' aptitude for technological advancement in the series, unless of course the series has an ulterior motive besides just having fun with an alternate universe wherein Nazis took over the world. Admittedly, the first Wolfenstein reboot was not all that bad in terms of propaganda. It had some of it, but it was mostly ignorable. It was the second installment that really put things into high gear. Grace Walker was an over-the-top, sassy black woman who constantly mistreated all her comrades in arms, and who voiced her contempt for white America, which I can only deduce was done to appeal to a particular segment of the SJW crowd who hates white people. I know a lot of people think the war on whites is a silly concept, but the fact is that there are folks who hate white people, and there is support for them in popular media and academia. Then there's the retconning of BJ into a half-Jewish man who gains closure on his turbulent childhood by killing his white father, who himself is a gross, irrational caricature of everything people hate about white men in the 1950s. I mean, if the father was so racist, why did he marry a Jewish girl? And where was the logic behind punishing his child for being sweet on a black girl by having him kill the family pet? What did the dog have to do with anything? The way Machine Games portrayed the father made no sense, unless of course the goal was to sculpt him into an effigy for people to burn. Why did Machine Games even need to touch on BJ's parents at all? Why did his father need to be a villain and not a hero? They could have just as easily made him into an underground resistance fighter rather than a Nazi sympathizer, but they didn't. Personally, I think BJ's mother being Jewish and the killing of his father are a symbolic way for the player to reject BJ's whiteness. 
It's not like his mom and dad are some distant, easily ignorable point in the game. They're a central component of the story. Then there's the scene where Hitler is reduced to a senile buffoon who kills Ronald Reagan in a fit of rage. Yes, I'm aware that the man in question is technically too young to be Ronald Reagan in that timeline, and I know that Reagan didn't come from Arizona. The thing is, even the people who made the model and textures for his outfit called him Ronald Reagan. This scene was a pretty clear nod to the audience, and the discrepancies are either a screw-up on the part of the developers, or they're a potential loophole through which they could escape if someone from the Reagan family tried to sue them for defamation. Anyway, I get it. Hitler was bad, and so we can safely portray him in any way we want for the purposes of entertainment. Even though Hitler was not an idiot and was actually an extremely intelligent, calculating man, which is what made him dangerous, I'm willing to chalk this scene up to childish antics for the sake of childish antics. On the other hand, while personally I've never been a big fan of Ronald Reagan, the inclusion of him getting shot is an extremely distasteful gesture on the part of Machine Games. Supposedly, we're taught to treat ex-presidents with some level of dignity, and if you think there's nothing wrong with shooting an ex-president in a video game, ask yourself what would happen if someone shot Barack Obama. But that's the double standard we live in today, and by the way, shooting Barack Obama in a video game would not be tasteful in my opinion. Another instance of what I assume is a manifestation of Machine Games' agenda is when Seth Roth makes mention of the Das Schuhe bunker being built in New Mexico before the Americas were, quote, subjugated by the Europeans. Sure, Europeans did a lot of bad things in the Americas, but I can't help but feel like Seth's statement here is tossed in as an underhanded demonization of white people that conveniently leaves out all the juicy history of conquest, rape, and murder that happened in the Americas before the white man ever showed up. Even if your historical knowledge base is limited to films like Dances with Wolves, the Pawnee clearly weren't very nice to the Lakotas, and that dirty evil white man John Dunbar did risk his life to defend his Lakota friends. Machine Games is playing into the dangerously popular belief that all white people are inherently evil and that all other people are angelic saints, and this mindset is contributing to racial tensions. An unrelated but still disturbing thing about Wolfenstein is its needless placement of a pregnant woman into combat. While the scene itself is entertaining and arguably hilarious, I fear it too plays into a dysfunctional narrative. The one that says men and women are identical in ability and nature, and that their roles are completely interchangeable. It's one thing for women to be independent and able to freely pursue their goals and dreams without societal restriction. It's another to romanticize putting a pregnant woman into combat. It's misguided, regressive, and lacks any understanding of female instinct to protect babies. Talk to any woman who's miscarried or lost a baby during pregnancy, and it will be painfully clear just how counterintuitive this scene is. Ironically, it's men who typically don't understand this, and my guess is that it was men who chose to include this absurd moment in some equally misguided attempt to placate young feminists who've never been a mother. Now the thing is, if this game didn't exist in the current political climate, I'd probably take no issue with this scene. Like I said, it's funny, but the fact is that there is a real push to masculinize women and feminize men in the first world, and this scene plays right into that push. Moving on, the sequel has tons and tons of communist flags all over the place, which have no good reason to be present, even if this is alternate history. The Nazis won the war, which means they would have obliterated communism because the Nazis hated it with a passion. This might have been easy to ignore were it not for the fact that one of the major factions in the game is a bunch of communists. And just to be clear, communism is bad. Very bad. Capitalism can certainly be bad too when people abuse the power they obtain through it. But given the choice between the two ideologies, capitalism is clearly the moral superior. I know I've said this a lot recently, but communism has killed more people than any other ideology or movement in the history of the world. Communists literally put the Nazis to shame. 65 million people killed in the People's Republic of China, 20 million in the Soviet Union, 2 million in Cambodia, 2 million in North Korea, 1.7 million in Ethiopia, 1.5 million in Afghanistan, 1 million in the communist states of Eastern Europe, 1 million in Vietnam, and roughly somewhere around 150,000 in Latin America. Anyway, call me crazy, but Wolfenstein has an agenda, and it coincides perfectly with the refugee crisis in Europe as well as the immigration debate in the US. It has an underhanded way of giving credence to the idea that being a white European is bad, and it furthers the narrative that all European accomplishments and wealth were taken from someone else. This simply isn't true. 
All one need do is look at what was going on around the world before colonialism, and you can clearly see that Europeans and East Asians were far more advanced than anyone else. Colonialism didn't write the Magna Carta. It didn't push Aristotle to write his great works. It didn't build Stonehenge. It didn't invent British common law or democracy. It didn't dream up the assembly line or foment the Industrial Revolution. It didn't harness the power of the alternating current or create the first transistor. The painfully simple truth is that if you look at a world map of IQ distribution and match that up with historical and cultural achievements before and after colonialism, the history of the world and the current state of affairs make a lot more sense. While some people argue that economic development and IQ are culturally and environmentally determined, which is true to an extent, that explanation, given as the whole picture, is still quite ironic because all the countries who adopt Western values and systems tend to do a lot better than they did before. Whether you like it or not though, IQ is a real thing, and while the tests may not be perfect, they do measure something that some people have more of than others. Most white people clinging to the nurture and cultural side of the debate have never actually lived and worked in a society where the average IQs are between 70 and 85. Instead of burying our heads in the sand, what we should be doing is researching ways to increase their intelligence via some kind of gene therapy. But no one is allowed to do this kind of research because of political correctness. And while we sit here and pretend that IQ has no genetic basis, China is busy breeding a new generation of geniuses. People flip out about this stuff because they believe, if they acknowledge any of it, that white people will start oppressing everyone. But what these folks should be asking themselves is that if white people are so terrifying, then why are millions of non-white immigrants flocking to their countries to be oppressed and mistreated by them? Contrary to popular belief, most of these migrants are not fleeing war zones. Most of them are seeking economic advancement. Furthermore, the war zones some of them are fleeing from are often ones that other regional countries like Saudi Arabia have played a major role in creating. Not to mention plenty of their neighbors refuse to take in any significant amount of the displaced people. Why should the task of taking in refugees fall almost exclusively to Western nations where cultural and linguistic assimilation are impeded more? Why aren't places like Qatar, Saudi Arabia, and the United Arab Emirates taking in millions of people? Why aren't Egypt and North African countries taking in people? And let's be honest about something else. Resources. Europeans and Asians are the ones who mostly do stuff with them. Other countries simply have never had the human capital necessary to do anything with them. If they did, Wakanda would be a real place and there'd be computer manufacturing facilities in the Congo. Now, are countries often underpaid for their resources? Perhaps so, but considering that they are literally worthless to them without foreigners, I'd say they might be getting a fair deal. Also, you have to remember that these countries often get paid millions of dollars every year in foreign aid that the local kleptocratic governments steal and funnel into their Swiss bank accounts. You can't hold Europeans responsible for that. In fact, you really can't blame Europeans for being tired of their tax dollars getting wasted on making a few bureaucrats in some other country richer than they are. The truth is that European colonialism, despite its many atrocities, has mostly made the world a better place for everyone. More people today have running water and electricity, there's better food production and distribution, there's better medical treatment, most charity and philanthropic organizations have been started by white Europeans, and the non-white world population has soared to several billion. Meanwhile, whites remain a global minority. Think about that for a minute. Before colonialism, the world population was less than a billion. Now it's over 7 billion. And what thanks do Europeans get? They get video games, films, and documentaries telling them how evil they are, and people rejoice as their countries are taken over by people unlike themselves. What's confusing about all that is that I thought conquest was wrong. I thought usurping someone else's culture, land, and identity was wrong. I thought holding children responsible for their parents' misdeeds was wrong. The truth is that if you think what the British and the Spaniards did in the Americas was bad, namely replacing the indigenous populations with themselves, then you cannot support mass migration, as its goal is the same outcome. Paris is a mess, and London now has a majority foreign-born population, and the most popular boy's name was recently found to be Mohammed. Europeans wanting to remain European isn't racist, bigoted, or morally reprehensible. The people coming in don't want to be European. They want to change Europe. And that's paradoxically the same problem people have had with colonialism, that it changed, altered, and usurped other people's cultures. 
All people should be proud of who they are because it's not healthy to self-hate, and yet that's exactly what